the issue ranging among the two major political parties in Nigeria, the internal democracies, how they have been managing it because it has been causing uproars and hues and cries from the two parties. Uh, to give you a background to what is happening, if you look at the PDP, there is a call for the head of uh, the national chairman, which is a conduct male, allegedly by a governor, or let me say some governors in the party. And on the other side, with the APC, there is an issue with the uh, special caretaker committee led by Governor Mimala Boni of Yobe State. So, some members in the APC are not, have no say, been going down well with what is happening with the caretaker committee, which has led <coughs> some members to go to court and file cases against uh, the leadership of Alaji Mimala Boni. So, today we discuss the legal perspective and the political perspective. Today I have with me uh, a public affairs analyst and a barrister, a legal luminary. I have barrister uh, Paul Ajiroba. Yeah. You're welcome on the show, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for inviting me. And uh, thanks for our viewers and listeners. I wish us a few here. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, let me say, to give words the background, when we talk about democracy, I think in any system of government, there is a vehicle for leadership choosing. And I think in a democracy, we need political parties. But uh, if the political party is not doing well, do you think they can give the people the best of the characters and the countries? So looking at the context of a political party is not doing well, and relating it to Nigeria, where we have the two major political parties almost in this array, what's the fate of the masses or of our democracy in general? Uh, you see, the way we practice our democracy here in Nigeria is, you know, politics all over the world is a game of interest. You said you don't want to deceive ourselves. It's a game of interest. It now lies in the end of, is my personal interest, is he uh, above individual uh, uh, the general interest. But the way we practice our democracy in Nigeria is that we are too greedy and selfish with our ideas sometimes. That if it doesn't, if I'm not the one, I will make sure the system is all comfortable for the person that is in charge. That is why we see the so-called political gladiators in Nigeria. One will move from a party today, come to B party, B party to your party, unlike developed nations. The major is being dominated by, like US now, Democrat and uh, Republican. And you will see continuous defection. Yes, I agree. In every house, even between the children, father and children, we always have this agreement. It's inevitable. But where the issue lies is that where the intra-party issues has gotten to a level that they cannot resolve amongst themselves until they get to court, not only at the trial courts, to the apex courts. It means something is wrong to those people pioneering the affairs above the ideology of the party, which will help the masses. La, 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 let's go by history. During the time of Awolowo and Akintola, we also have the same thing under the action group. It got with that, that people are saying, uh, Awolo, Baba Awolo, he doesn't want anybody to rise. And Akitola has his own followers too. And I said it earlier that it's a game of interest. And it's what pays each individual. What's up, sir? Why, now that you mention uh, Akitola and Awolo, think to an extent. At that point in time, Awolo was seen as the leader of the party then. But there was a chairman. There was there was a legal perspective in the constitution of the party then that could relieve Akintola of his premiership in the southwestern I mean in the southern region part of the country. And the question was that Akintola claimed that he has not been given a fair hearing, but he knew that the law has taken its course. He has to seek help from the outside. 
join me forming an an, an alignment with the, 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 with the, with the let, let's say the central government. Then. Let's <laughs> just say the central government okay. forming an alignment with the central government. Then, but the major problem, I mean, the major thing is that I will not. I mean, Akitola knew he would never have his way. He later left the party. But what we are having today is a case where you are in power, you control the party automatically. Uh, you see, uh, the, the concern of any party, whether PDP or APC or any other political party, once you are the president, you are the leader of the party. Once you are the governor of the state, you are the leader of the party in that state. We may have another other political stalwarts, other statesmen, uh, political gladiators. I, 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 I agree with that. But the point I'm trying to make, relating this from Aulo and Akitola to this time, is because it is an intra-party issue that started a long time ago. It's still one particular thing that will cause intra-party issues. One, am I giving sense of belonging? Two, I work for the party, I need that to be compensated. Three, maybe I'm looking for a particular position, office, or contract, I'm not be, I'm not be given. For uh, some other things, uh, you know, the psychology of an average human being, this would be the issue that variety, let me use the word variety. He has served for so many years, it is my thought to also serve. So when there's no, <laughs> that's the major problem. It has served for like, based on water, and based on our agreement, it's my turn. If, it is, if they don't agree, the nice is crisis. Sir, I think I like the perspective you are taking, and I think I seem to be enjoying the journey of this conversation. But now let me give you a glimpse. Now that you started with our law, that was the first republic. Let's go to the second republic. I've read some books. I've listened to interviews that actually shows that in the, back then in the MPN or UPN, even though I'm mistaken, the ruling party then during the Shagari time, that Shagari was never allowed to sit at the high table. Only the president, the first president and the secretary could sit at the high table. And if Shagari, as the president, rose his hand to talk, he, has, he needed the permission of the party chairman or the secretary to talk. If he's shut down, he has to he has to shut up. That's one. One other thing is that Shagari, if he knows he wants to attend a meeting or a convention of the party, he must be there before the chairman. Because if he if he's not there before the chairman, there will not be a standing ovation for him as the president of the of the whole country. Because only the national chairman could command a standing ovation at the party. Now, how did we get here? I know I have a perspective to that after that. But <clears throat> I just want how were things work, were things working there? I wouldn't say that things things were working there. Things were also working. I'm just talking politically. I'm not yes, saying I'm not saying politically. Politically, let me give you an instance. If I don't know much, let me even start from the economy of Nigeria. Yes, you know the chairman, national chairman of a party, is the number one man of a party. When we look, at, when we, to, we are to look at that based on the party constitution, even be you the president, if you are the ruling, you are still subject to the powers or what of uh, the national chairman or national leadership of a political. Because as a sitting president, you are also a member of that political party. So when it now comes to the government, you may be the number one. But when it comes to the party, the chairman or the state chairman is the is the number one. In church. But now, when we look at in those days, it's not that they don't face challenges too. But I believe that the, the ideology they are using to work then, it really works than personal and individual interest. Let me come to the Southwest. Okay, let me go to the nation as a whole. As at that time, the currency of Nigeria was much more stronger than the dollars and pound sterling we have now. I have I've read it when Britain sought for the permission that they are coming to Nigeria to seek an advice, how are we running our system? 
as at that time, let me come to this. The economy of the country then, ah, before the economy of the country, it got to a time, it's a military president. That I said so. That it's not money is not a problem. We are thinking but, about how to spend the money. How to spend how to make the money. But, but, but now, eh, the money is even there, but the life is difficult for people. I'm going somewhere. Let me now come to the southwest, where Awolo and Akitola really dominates. Don't forget, as at that time, the cocoa house we have in the border now was built by cocoa money, than which southwestern they use in uh, in getting their resources. When you go to the north, there are known for cola nut and tomato. That's what they use in building their uh, something, uh, their, their resources over there. There was decentralization in governance. Although they may have a central government, but by virtue of political ideology, by virtue of political ideology, it makes them to develop their uh, their, their region based on what is available to them. And we can see that an, each individual then, as at that time, and each individual then, as at that time, really contributed, uh, benefit from the different of democracy. Unlike what we have now. You know, in those uh, there are particular parties that are very common in, in the in the northern part of the country, we have a political party. Again, in the southern part, we have a popular political party. But what we have now is that I'm very sorry to say this: an individual person is even stronger than the party himself. And I think that's where the problem uh, it really starts. So you talk to I, 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 I'm coming. An individual party. An individual person. Then, during the terms of, although we can say that democracy was just starting then, and the vision of those papa in those days, and the one that we, that even most of their prophecies then, let me use that word, they may not be prophets, but they are political prophets. Most of their ideologies then are what we are experiencing now. Yeah. Let's go to the north, let's go to the east. Let's go to the southwest. Most of what we are seeing now is just a way of how I call it. Re, re, uh, 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 it's, it's more or less like we copy and paste and redefine the vision they have in, those, in in time past. Most of the roads built was built by some the political gladiators in those days. The media we are having now, including online media, eh, started in Ibada, NTA Ibada, 1959. How come then, when we are not exposed, the currency then was much more stronger than what we have now? The economy was much more good than what we have now. So it's because, you see, when politics it, is what it concerns everybody, let's be sincere with ourselves, because it's governance that will determine your existence in a particular society, be it Muslim, be it Christian. And any laws being made, any enactment, whether even you are seeing God face to face, once you are, in the, you are on earth, you are bound by it. Now, but when an individual is stronger than the nation, or not the party, that's where that problem comes from in this dispensation of politics. It's not that we don't have that then in those days, but the powers are not too much than that compared to what we have now. It's the party that determines what goes on now, then. But now you just an individual sometimes. And there's a saying that Iki Khan Kinda Bushi. And that's the challenge and the problem we have in our political party system now. That we think that we should have. It kind of, we should sit down at the round table and further re-strategize again. You know, I think I want to stay on this same olden days. Let's go back to Kwara State. We've talked about the whole country, the region. I think there was a time in the, in the 70s, the late 70s, or early 80s, when a certain governor, with his leader then, 
Let me just say, Baba Sariki, add, the, add this issue of not wanting the government to return. But it was compared by the national leadership of the party. He, owns the, he practically owns the party in the state, but it was compared by the national leadership of the party and he listened to the bidding of the national leadership of the party. But he played a maratonic wonder and supported somebody from another party. The only thing he did was he made sure he owns the legislative arm of government, but the executive, he sold it out. Playing very clever politics, which shows that even if for that four years, he will, he will not have a hold of, of the state. The making of his own, a governor he enthroned, he will not have a say on it because he enthroned the government, he supported the governor against the wish of his own party. He, he never left the party. If we have a sad situation of that time, I think such a person could easily leave the party away and come to a new party. So, exactly where I'm going, uh, the dynamism of those, of those days is even more attractive than what we, what we do, what we're having today. And you see, in those days, it is the grassroots, the grassroots politicians, let me say, that really formed the structure. That word grassroots, the concept grassroots, <laughs> is, is already disappearing today. And that's the point I'm making. They really formed the structure of the political party then. Unlike what we have now. All, it, before you can know, before you can turn to be a politician in those days, you must you must be known to a common man on the streets. And those are the grassroots uh, persons. But I think the something I'm talking now as an independent minded person, not as a party man. So that people listening to us will be thinking that uh, is this yeah, supporting party? party. Yeah. Uh -huh. But now the issue now is that most people are even holding the party structures now. Let's ask ourselves: Are they grassroots? Uh, are they really rooted when it comes to the grassroots? Because politics is from grassroots. Let, let me use the case study of Akintola and uh, I would like to it, about oh. When I did my research, Akintola is even more grassroots than Babawolowo. Because an average airline loves Awolowo. Yes, but an average grassroots <laughs> loves Akintola. Loves Akintola. That is why Akintola could help you to be successful to certain extent. Even, sir, go to Bala today. You can start the argument. You will think you will win, but a lot of people will support Akintola against Awolowo. Uh, of course. Even to date, the argument is still there today. The debate is still alive. But, 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 but the structure, why the example you give about Saraki, could really have his way then is that he was really rooted with the grassroots people. But in, in some instances in, a, in our political system now, the so-called political gladiators, they really hold the top, but they don't even hold the grassroots. So they and that's why we are seeing all sorts of crises up and down that so controlling. We are retiring the grassroots. That's the point I'm making. Because grassroots are the ones that even contribute more in the election. How many PhD holders in political science have how many voters got? How many professors of evil law know their word? But go ask another Kadama. He can tell you the political history of Nigeria from 1960. To date, people that have held positions, elective and appointments. And that is how we know a very good politician. Because people that are really controlling the system are not all are rooted at the top. Not even at the grassroots. And it's the grassroots that will tell you the reality of what is going on in, the, in governance. Some are seated in the SC just talk based on paperwork. What is the application to a common man on the street? We are talking about inflation in the society. A man sitting down in the SC collecting uh, the people's money, you may not even feel the... the, the, the they will not feel the impact because we fed their cars, <laughs> we buy their clothes, <laughs> we send so our children to school. And it's only a grass shooter that knows what is going on. A, a, a Yalakara woman 
They are bought maybe being K, uh, beans at the rate of 200 naira a month ago. She's now buying 500 naira. It's what I can explain how the governance is going. And that is why the so called politicians in those days could really perform. That what we have, what we have now, sorry to say, and that's why it's called party crisis, is we only base our implementation on report and paperwork. On report and paperwork. What is really going on on the street? And that's where governance lies. Uh, I want to jump to 1999. But before I go, I jump to 1999. I want to talk about the United States for a while. The United States President in 1992, I think, we came Charlie wrote in his book, he wrote that first rule of politics, politics is local. A president, a former president of the United States, a two-time president, a president that was that was impeached, he knows the nooks and crannies of politics in the United States. He wrote that politics is local. What, is that, what I'm trying to drive out is that for a former president to write that, you don't go against the masses for the elite. Not that you go against the elite for the masses. You try to balance the issues. But with the way things are coming now, it seems that the masses are feel, they are not feeling too comfortable where they are. And the we the masses on the street, we seems not to matter in the calculation of the Nigerian economy politics anymore. Uh you see I will still say this. I understand the angle you are coming from. The problem in our political system, the electorate, we are the cause of the problem. I will still say it. Someone will determine my destiny for four years. Whatever it says becomes the law of the land. And I will not study the credentials. I will not come out to determine. Some people have even made this mindset that uh, if you vote with it, can't. Votes, vote first and let us whether it will count or it will not count. And it's results on the in 2015. And that is why our so called leaders are really taking us for a ride. I've studied Nigerian politics, the highest you can see in political turnouts is 35% of the population in that society. That's the highest you can see. It's not even up to 50%. That means 35% determines the destiny of a political society for the next four years. Now you now ask people at the end of it, they will be complaining. We are not being carried along. We are not. Uh, do you perform your civic responsibilities? And let me say this. Rigging can only be successful. Eh? When a candidate is not popular, what, let's do our statistics very well. Why was Akintola successful in all his moves against Awolo? It's because he's popular. If he's not a popular candidate, you are just a minority. Your, your voice should not be heard. You know the calculations are right now. Take Awolo out. He knows. But now, people that, some that are even agitating, they are not even popular. So, for people's voice to count, Without any rigging being successful, the vote cannot be close and you'll be expecting that rigging. But people that even up to, to take up the, uh, the, the uh, to stand out and say, no, this is what we want to decide, I will take care of the responsibility. And this, it boils down to with the youths. I'm sorry to say, when I study the politics, go and look at the time of Awolo, Akitola, and the likes. Majority of their followers, then they uh, uh, they are still young people when they are. No, 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 I think when we say followers, we will be bringing it down. Let's say the, the players. The, the players. How, how old was the now? They are young people, but in our generation, how, how old was um, Fanny Kamedi? Those guys, 20, 30. 20s, 30s. And they are more, but we are in a. Go and check the population of. When I, I did my statistics, we were in a. has risen to 40 million unemployed alone out of 200 million population. And the population of Nigeria 
youths alone takes like no less than 60% of the population of this country. For people that ought to determine where the direction of this nation will go, with the youth, we are not taking charge of it. We are busy watching something I don't want to mention. We'll be doing opinion polls on social media. We are political. Uh, we are social media politicians. In a particular state, they conducted uh, a, 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 a local government election. When I, I saw the turnout of the so-called young minds, I said, in this country, if you are not careful, we are doomed. Because the leaders, the so-called future leaders, are not taking charge. Yeah, thank you very much. I think, now, let's go back, let's come back to the era that we are in. After the Friday uh, special special to study, the administrations that are, the administrations that I can say a lot about. There are administrations I can say a lot about that I experienced. But I've read several books about the Obasanjo and the um, uh, Shagari and the Flamin, even the Kanonzi books of this world. One thing that was not written in the book, but I believe it's hidden. There are a lot of things. If you read books very well, when I like to read, but I came to realize that there are things that are hidden that even the writers may not know that they are very, they are hiding something in that book. Every book you read about the administration of Obama Central, you will still see that issue of how to It's a dent on the political career of Obama Central. It has never happened in Nigeria before. I think that's one. When you think about the way Obasanjo brand this, brand this, the way he ran this country, his lapses, there will always be lapses. The, ma the major thing a lot of people say against Obasanjo was this from third time agenda. Normally I don't blame him, I don't blame him for it. If any of us has the chance, we'll do it too. It takes more than a human to forget something. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that it's only normal that a human, yeah, that a human being is greedy. But what I will never, as a person, forgive about Sanjo for was hijacking the party structure as a sitting executive, which gives the governors under him the audacity to do the same thing in their states. Almost every governor during their time got a second time ticket, except Mbadi Nuju of Rebbe State. And that was because Mbadi Nuju was, at, was in a public Maga Egg with the vice president of that day. So now, I just think, do you, do you, will you agree with me that we are still following the, I mean, we are seeing the pit that the passenger took? As much as I would love to agree with him on almost everything, I would not agree with him on that. Because he laid the foundation for the executive elected members, let me say elected members, to start prognosing and start acting as leaders in their respective constituencies, where they are supposed to be. Constitutionally, they are supposed to be addressed that as floor members or stakeholders. But they make decisions. Now, we are at the crossroad. The governor from River State is shouting that the national, president, the national chairman of his party must go. A president in Nigeria dismantled the house, created something that is not in the constitution of his party. And we are here. And my fear is this, if the governor is very, very sure that he will get a second time ticket, he will not give a damn about his party not to talk of the people. Because before you come out to the people, you first go to your party and get, go through the primaries. But how many governors go to, through the primary for, for the second time? They just, it, it's, like, um, it's like running water. They just pass through it without, I mean, without a bridge. That's one. The same thing goes for the presidency. How many people were came out against Buhari to challenge him in his own party? So now I think do you think do you agree that we are still in the pits of uh, President Lucio Bobas and Job because he believes only him can do Nigeria, I mean can help Nigeria better. And now he creates so he, cre he has created some loopholes that we cannot cover anymore. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree with you, Pasha, that there should be autonomy of party system and the leader of the government. 
for President Olusha Gombasanjo combined both. And maybe why we say that is because he has what we call a military background. That I don't believe that once they are at the end, they should separate a party system. Is that Charles de Gaulle in France <laughs> had the military background? Don't even talk about Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> 70% of American presidents has military parliament. But they never stampeded on their party systems. You know, here in Nigeria, we just use party as a platform to get to the office. Let's get, uh, let's get it right. But it was never like that in the 70s and the 60s. It was never like that. That's when the foundation of political party really, uh, politics really starts from. Let's be say how many Governors, president, follow the party manifestos after the election. Some will even through this platform get to a pol political party, and after when there is crisis, we decamp. For what? The IPP member in one state like that, the campaign. The, the campaign. What we just use political party for in our dispensation is a platform to get to where I'm going, going to. So once I get there, I maybe I party structure, party system is none of my concern any longer. Which ordinarily, any elected official is a product of a political party. I even when we look at the constitution very well, when it comes to national assembly members, it tells us, I think section sixty three, that once you are elected as a member of National Assembly, whether reps or Senate, and you defect to the other party, you automatically lose your seats as either a senator or reps. It's in our constitution. No, here we are today. <laughs> but most of them now hide under the exception. And what's the exception to that rule? Is that when there is a crisis, in, in the, the party. party. Now, we don't forget to divide what a crisis, crisis means. Yes. Let, let, let me, there's a difference between crisis and disagreement. Thank God you're a lawyer. You help us with some ambiguities. <laughs> because what <laughs> is a crisis? <laughs> you see, crisis, uh, to me, is, uh, let me say, a disagreement that you can never say to any longer that has got it to a level that we can never set to any longer, that for us to part ways, and not for you to use that again to come back to that same spot. But here we are today. People will just use the same platform to fly, leave after one thing or the other when the interest is not being obeyed, come back again, go to another way, come back again. And that is why we see. Yes, when we look at the party constitution, the governor of a state should be the leader. I agree. But there should be respect for the party structure that brought him to power. The president is also the leader of that party nationally. There should be respect. But we should divide what governance is, quite different from what party system is in the country, so that there will be balance. Because you, when you look at the way they practice politics in, in, in the first republic, even the second republic. Ali will see even an individual party members because having issues with the leadership is not that common. Because it's not that common. And that's why you see that both PDP and APC today, we have issues all, issues all. The party brought and so there must be a kind of and that's why I want to say that each political party must have what we call a discipline. A discipline of party system, a discipline of party structure. What makes up a party son and individual person is combination of everybody. Yes, there may be a leader. And that is when because if there is party crisis. It may be difficult for even the leader to focus on
miracles those people in those days run the apps that really works. And where are we missing it that we can come again and still strategize? All right. Now, I think we've spoken too much in parables. Let's just eat the nails to the head. Let's start with PDP. The party chairman that was imposed by the governor because the party. Can we say it's an imposition? Allegedly. <laughs> okay. To appease one governor so that he will not leave and the party will not solve. Now, after four years, two, three months to the convention of the party, the same governor wants the, I mean, the national chairman out of the way. Three months to the convention of the party. I mean, to the, is it that convention or congress? One of the two. Uh, you see, let me say this. I'm not whether I'm, I'm, I'm talking. I'm not talking as a party man. No. When you look at the profile of uh, Uchi Secondos, eh? Yes, you see, interest in politics is not what you can sideline. Yes. and even you, everybody, we are political animals. You support the person that will favor you in anything you are doing. It's, it's natural. We just say that politicians. So I agree. But when I check the profile of Uche Secundos, he has been in the capacity as secretary, acting secretary, acting chairman. Now I'm talking, uh, when you look at his profile, I don't see anything wrong with him becoming national chairman. And we even saw what played. We have, we have so many people that went to the primary with him and even for him. So, but the issue is that interest in politics is not what we can sideline. It is what will surely happen. That's just my own position. No, this, uh, before you take a position, okay, let, you are a legal practitioner. I think if you want somebody out of the way, there are ways that you can get him out. You can't just, you can't just get him out for the sake of wanting to get him out. Okay, I don't want you and I don't want you. It doesn't work that way. I think there should be steps you have to take to get him out. But when somebody starts saying you must get out by all by all means, I think why don't we just okay now he has less than three months to spend as the party chairman. Why can't this what does he want to do within three months? That I still want him out of the way. You can support somebody else. If what if he wins? This is a party, it's not a family house. Where you just do what you want. So I think if you do you think if somebody like this has um, the capacity to chase our president out of the office within a blink of an eye, we not do it and put our country in this area. You see, everywhere in the world is an institution that produces the leader. It's an institution. And I will call them power that be. Some people call them Godfatherism. They call them all sorts of names. That's the way God has created it. But the way we now interpret it quite differs. Now, I know we can really support this, which is a condos for him getting there. And he has some, maybe he comes from his region and some other things. But where the issue lies is that, you see, uh, he who plays the pipers, dictates the tune. He dictates the tune. And that's why I said, you see, in politics, or in life generally, interest is what everybody is working for. Will my interest be satisfied? If not, why the support? Why? The support. And I always say this, let me add this to it. Our politicians should not be desperate because of the power that God has given to them and would they have helped to get to office or power in one way or the other. Yes, if they want to remove which is secondos, there are procedures of the party in removing it. Even like close to seven national officers, I think they have resigned now, that they can no longer work with him. But I do say something, whether IPC or PDP, if they start working like this, how will the structure of this country, how will it now? Oh, that's where I'm going to. 
exactly my point that if the parties are the two major dominant party, if they are in disarray, do you think that will give them the, the time to study, look at the problem of this country, and reason about the best person for the crisis we are facing? Because the country is already in crisis. That's the point I'm making, and the issue is that APC have crisis. Even PDP also have a lot of crisis. You know, also where PDP is ruling, there are several tendencies even in the PDP. We we have larger than in, in Southwest alone, there are several tendencies. Well, in in APC, the the, <laughs> the um the farm fire shade the fire shade and, and the market day and market day we have the Southwest. Yes. In APC, we have a lot as well. Even Lagos State alone. We have the Lagos for Lagos. <laughs> we have the Babasa place. <laughs> in, in Lagos State alone, there are five tendencies alone in Lagos State alone. During the World Congress that was aired like, that aired like is it three or four uh, weeks ago, there are four to five tendencies, if not more than that. In Kwara alone, we have several tendencies. In uh, in Oshun here, Aregbe Shola and uh, Oyetola, and Oyetola, they have the same party. And they all have the same party: a city governor and, and a, a former governor, a, a former governor and a minister. So, if things go on like the two major dominant party, is it that how will the country move forward? That's why I said there must be respect for party supremacy. <laughs> now, no, let's. If there's no, I'm coming. If there's no respect for party supremacy. Governance may be difficult because whether a sitting president, a serving senator, house of rep member, or governor, governance alone is a task. Is a task. Uh, now, party issue alone is another task on its own. Opposition is another task on its own. To management of human beings is another task on its own. And if both APC and PDP are in this crisis. How will this country move forward? Exactly my point. We'll and I'm coming. Why we can see more of development those days is because there are good managerial skills in managing party crisis. All like what we have now. There are good managerial skills to manage party crisis. And you know in life, one of the ingredients of managing prior to best of is a give and take. That's just my own idea. We've, about that. we've talked about um, now the PDP uh, is losing governors, losing senators, and now to the APC. Now let's talk about the APC themselves. I think members of the APC allegedly were persuaded never to approach any court of law on this issue of uh, the special caretaker committee and for all that is worth we uh, no one of them went to any court of any jurisdiction so the party will stay intact now for sometimes we have a president. To an extent, the president normally is a member of the executive, has a force in the party. But the president bringing out a statement that is allegedly unknown to even the party structure. The first thing I think, Nigeria normally we should question them that that place in which the meeting was held was meant for the fake. For us to take party issues to that place, I think Niger Nigerians should ask questions. Now Nigerians are not asking questions. What transpired that they almost made the party lo I mean lost a gubernatorial seat in Ondo State when we have a four to three just ju a judgment, yeah. which means that if there was a single mistake, the I mean the. The party is losing. I can't know we will be gone. Jagada will come in. Yes. Now, the question is this: Can you give us a glimpse? Because I've listened to, I've read the judgment, I've listened to.
Of him falling, but of him falling on my Buzeko man. The two of them opined that maybe, just maybe, the Jegede camp was afraid of adding Imala Bruni as a party, as a party to that suit, so that they will not be told that he has immunity and he cannot be taken to court. Maybe, just maybe. The, and the majority judgment says that Mimala Bruni was not added as a party to that suit. The minority judgment opined that APC is the principal. Mimala Bruni is just an agent to the principal. That once the principal is mentioned, there is no need to mention the agent that perform the job on behalf of the principal. The only thing is the legality of that agent. Was the agent right to do such? And I think you understand the legal, the legal, I mean, the legal angle I'm coming from. Now, APC is in that crisis. I think it seems they are not learning from mistakes. They are the issue of that nature in some way. Yes. Somebody went to court, and one way or the other, they lost everything they want. And that same person has come out to make the same threat that the party has been paused since the day that meeting was called and Mimala Bunny became the Catholic chairman. That if maybe they are pushed to the world, they can go to court and something that happened in Safari could happen. So now, do you say, are you saying that we will see the kind of what we saw in Safari or the kind of what we saw in um, Bayesa State, where a president would have been preparing to become the president and then 12 hours to the inauguration, he will be told that, sir, you cannot go in because your party is making a mistake. I think I've made my opinion known. The law is clear about it. And uh, the judgment of Akere Dulu and uh, Jegede is an high hope now to where the direction of so many nominees, if they are not careful, if APC is not careful, let me use that word, sorry, we come from. The law is clear, section 173 of the Constitution, that a governor sitting governor or serving governor cannot at the same time i'm saying from the angle of law now not at the same time be serving in any official capacity whether appointment or any paid employment I'm talking as a lawyer, and so many, Moise Banere, who was a former APC legal uh, advisor, I was also giving his opinion, and our opinion are the same. I think, as long as I've been scared, we also come out to say, uh, we, are, we, we are passing through a burning. Uh, because now, the judgment now is high up now. Can, in the forthcoming election, I think it's in you know, a number of states. Yes. Can uh, Buni now validly nominate any candidates now? Submit any name. Any name. Because any name that will be submitted to the NEC will be whether with the substantive national chairman or the so-called interim national chairman will be signed by him. So by virtue of that, if it's a pre-election matter, it's nomination alone, if challenged, the can party nullify will, everything. can nullify everything. That's why I said the issue of party crisis within the APC. Should Come back together and let us look at what are we do what the party is doing is in line with the law. And the, it, it is a common saying that you cannot put something on nothing and expect it to, to stand. There's even the issue of uh in the federal courts now about his candidature. Some have even challenged the issue of this world congress is. That can he, oh, as a city mean, governor, at the same time preside over a world congress? Uh, well, all the congresses. Now, what is the legal power that he has? There is voluntary provision of the constitution. Oh, sir, no, this is my question. You are a legal practitioner. You are given all these perspectives. Governors are powerful in Nigeria. Do they not have access to legal thoughts to these issues, or they are just trying to? Gangster, I mean, they understand all these issues. Yes, governors are powerful. And that's why I always say something. Lawyers are more needed in democracy or politics. Why? We are like the angels or guardians of law. 
Yeah, this is what the law says. I will, I will agree with you. I will <laughs> agree with you. I read, I read my life, and I read how the Clinton wrote that his head was saved by lawyers. <laughs> if not for lawyers, he would have been impeached and impeached. That's just, that's just the process of the law. Now, I did been uh, uh, me, uh, uh, Bundy was joined at the Supreme Court as a, uh, as one of the parties. The Supreme Court will not even look at the substance of the matter, whether they or not they get They will just look at the person that nominated uh, the okay, candidates. The is he known to the law and is he proper? We are talking about the party that is ruling the country currently. No, we are talking about the party that is ruling. This mistake was done at San Farah. Let me show you this mistake was done in Bahesa State, where the case of forgery, deputy governor, was done. Even similar thing was even uh, what also happened in Kuala States. Almost. Let me say in the lonely, lonely south. Sorry for using that, but I'm talking as a public affairs analyst now. Now the other elections coming. Another one was done in Kaduna, Kaduna status of assembly, a by election, which the party, let me say, interim chairman, nominate, surely nominates the candidate as well. But the issue is that, should we politicize what is written in the Constitution? Which it cannot be done. The Constitution of the Federal Republic is the ground norm. Sir, you are saying it cannot be done, but they are doing it. I, I'm not saying they are doing it. They are doing it. I, 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 I'm not saying that well, they are doing it. as a caricature chairman of the um, National Caricature Chairman of the Party, a governor, and we know that a governor cannot serve in another executive capacity. and. The, I, 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 I'm not a legal, I'm not the lawyer, sir, but I read it, it was very clear that this man has served as an executive for him to have submitted a name. He has served as an executive and he is also a governor of a state, which means that the only, the only uh, safe haven, the haven that the suit was never in any way, I mean, never in any way mentioned Mimala Boni or Governor Mimala Boni of Yobe State. That's the only safe haven they had. And then, if another suit carries the Governor Mimala Boni of Yobe State, that means they will win. My, my, my fear is even that the governance of uh, Mimala Boni in Yobe State is even performed as an executive governor of the state. Because all the party structure you know, is another task. We know how, how tedious that can be. Uh, now, the issue is that let APC, is a point of advice, bring in legal luminaries. They are learned in political situations. I think, and give opinion. I think saying bring in legal luminaries, we will be doing harm to APC. The president of this country is a professor. <laughs> A, a ministers, not a minister, <laughs> ministers. We have Malami, we have Fashola, we have Kiyamu. And then we have Ms. Banire that, no, that, that, that aligns with APC, even if he says he's no more, he can't, can't remember. We have, they have lawyers, and they are still making others. There were rumors that President Mahmoud Buhari consulted the first president that, what do we do? What we had was that the first advice the vice president gave for us that. Let's, the first thing we should do is to stop that this World Congress. I think it was three days to the World Congress. The first thing to do is let us stop this World Congress. But during this, I mean, the rumor said that the only person that actually changed that decision was the Minister of Justice. He says they, they can proceed, that they are covered. You are a lawyer, you are saying that he has no me. You opine. And then don't let me say you are saying you opine that because we I believe that we have one thousand lawyers, we have one thousand opinions. You opine that then that should that shouldn't have gone. I, I I doubt if this goes on, it will not be an exercise in futility. Let's be frank with ourselves. The Supreme Court are up to the task. I'm not, the, the word I'm saying is not a word of threat, but I'm talking now as a lawyer. Because the word even other political parties are watching the procedures in uh, pushing forward the so-called officers. Even within the party, people that have grievances. I said it in one media platform. Yes, DPC said there should be consensus. 
And what's the meaning of consensus in an election? We both agree. But in any situation when somebody says no, out of five, I don't well, no, I don't agree. The meaning is that let us go to an election. Now, if you now lose this at the election, you have fulfilled the requirement of the law. But even in most places in Nigeria, we have so many people that say no. I also, I'm also interested in this office. So in two minutes, we have less than two minutes to go, but let me give you an example of this. Consensus or no consensus. APC seems not to be managing the party well. And I'll give you an example. The agreement was a consensus was consensus candidates. But when we go to Lagos, <laughs> there were more than five tendencies. <laughs> they all they all got forms. If there is a consensus, I think <laughs> it's not to have come to one person from the federal, I mean, even not from the federal, the, the, all the forms for Lagos State should have been given to the Kadeka chairman. Okay, you, are, you give it to who you agree to give it to. But at the end of the day, the, I mean, the, I mean the, a, a lot of people got their forms from God knows where, I mean, God knows where. The same thing happens in this state. If we have, I'm very sorry to mention names, we have the camp of the state government, we have the camp of uh, Mr. B.O.B. If there is a consensus in Kwan, I think the form should have come to one person if it's coming to Samari, I mean, Mr. Samario to Mr. B.O.B. But one way or the other, they all had their forms. Everybody performed their uh, parallel war and war congress. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens, I mean, happened in Oshun State when the tendency of Arabian are threatening to take their own resource to Abuja by themselves if anybody is taking it from them. Now, if a party is going this way, don't you think the legal and the political uh, tendencies are not going right. And normally, it affects the governors because they think when they want to sleep at night, they think about the party, they think about the state. The same thing goes for the president, the same thing goes for the senators. What is the face of an African Nigerian that do not hit political money? Ah, that's why uh, that, you you've drawn me back to where I started from. If a party system is not organized, it will affect governance one way or the other. Because any candidate or elected officer is a product of that political uh, of that party system. Now, and in an ideal situation, before you can address any issues, you address the issue of your foundation first, which is the party, before thinking of any other person. And that's why I said all the political parties with grievances we must be disciplined. So that it will not affect a common man on the streets. The foundation may be faulty, which must be addressed first, before you be thinking of what are the things that I should do for the society. So I just think that whether PDP, whether APC, whether any other political parties, where grievances are, I would not want to say this because if I say I will offend some of my colleagues. Now why are you saying that there should not be grievances? Why they should not go to court? Why should they not go to court? <laughs> <laughs> but there are some times that each individual will shoot their sword so that they are for the sake of peace and for the sake of the society. And that's what I always preach in my own view, that society, uh, the people, are, 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 are the first power to first in any system of governance. And regardless of intra issues, it must be resolved first so that it will not affect an average masses uh, on the streets. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. I mean, Barista Paul Ajiroba. It's been a lengthy and objective, constructive, and I would love to stop the adjective, the, the construct. I mean, the discussion has been uh, a very lengthy and objective one. I uh, thank you very much for your time. <clears throat> I'm of the good reason once again. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, Mr.